Everyone, it's Friday. Yes, it is. And we're back with another episode. This time we have a guest in the house, which is always great. Um, you know, without any further ado, let's just get into this. You're going to be blessed today. Welcome to King to Speak with Pastor Dan Kellop and Reverend Zach Wells. Yeah. Come on, yeah. buddy. Oh, man, the band is here today. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that was close. Yeah. We almost showed up with a tie. That's right. We can't on Kingdom Speak do an episode without an. Every tie. good apostolic podcast needs a charismatic. <laughs> With no tie. <laughs> that I, I thought that was your intro for Zach Wells. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what. Uh, yeah. I, oh, you yeah. guys thought I was talking no, about Randy. Yeah, no. Oh, you thought I was talking about Randy. I'm sorry, Randy. No. How you doing today, brother Wells? Wow. Doing good. Wow. That's good. Wow. How's everybody That's good. doing? Good. I'm wow. a lot of people's charismatic friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get started, we have to stick to tradition here. Okay. Too late. It's We're time. already started. It's time. There's a five-star review I need to read to you, um, and this guy seems to really get it. Um, the title of this review is Ex co host Dork. Oh. Pastor McKillop has done a great job hosting. Ex. Okay. He even remembered the Bible bomb. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is my absolute favorite podcast. It's better. I recommend it to everyone I know. I have listened to every single episode, and I always look forward to to, a new, to when a new episode is released. You know, that's every Friday. You don't even have to think about that. Keep up the great work. And that is from Brittany Ger, <laughs> Greer Jewess. Greer Jewess. Brittany Greer Jewess. Yeah. Sure. On, <clears throat> not how you say that. On, <laughs> on Apple Podcasts. So we will say amen to Brittany Greer Jewess. One more. One more. Why not? Why not? It's Friday. Uh, J. David 76 says, necessary. The last two podcasts with Larry Booker oh, have been right. mind-blowing Come on. Right. and heart-searching. So thankful. The word alone is transforming, but then you add ministerial experience, and you realize that your own <clears throat> chaos is just a process. Grateful today. We will say amen to that, because we feel the same. Did you hear uh, so, someone commented on one of the channels that Larry Booker needed to become a regular? Oh, man. Yeah. I love how he just sat. Hey, producer, wake up. Hey, hey. Good. And he just sat like this. Yes. Yep. He was. Hey, how, how do you know he sat like that? Well, I, I, I was just going to say the same have. thing. <laughs> you, you weren't even Brother here. Dork was nowhere to be seen. You weren't even here. I was a bit self-conscious, and I had to mm -hmm. see what was said in my absence, you know. So well, He mentioned on the show when we were talking about it, he said, yeah, be a regular on the show. He said, what, what's 3,000 miles amongst friends? <laughs> 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 it's just, you know, I'll, I'll just shoot over every Friday. And, so good, man. Yeah. So good. Man, nothing like the voice of an elder. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. That's why we brought <laughs> Pastor Zach. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, glad I'm to have... I'm not yet 40. Biblically, I'm not yet 40. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you care to expand on, expand on what? Biblically? Well, the lame man in Acts said he was above 40. Oh, okay. I'm not yet 40. So. Okay. Uh, that's a bit okay. of a stretch. Yeah. Ah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be 40 in two weeks. More, oh, really? Yeah, June Do you 8th. want us to wait and drop this episode on your birthday? Hey, whatever. It's the day after my birthday. June yeah. 8th. June 8th. I think it's a Thursday this year. Well, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'll yeah. be 40. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I'll finally be a grown-up. You'll be able to say what you really say feel. What I, say what I want. Yeah. yeah. Man, has this last few days been, like, incredible. So you'll be hearing this whenever, whenever we release it on a Friday. Mm -hmm. But we are recording during Power Conference, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why I sound like I do. <clears throat> I have my, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have my, we have our Power Conference voice. Um, but really, there's more than, there's more than that to it, because we're, 
we're going to tap into some stuff here in a minute and talk about a subject that having a gruff voice is going <laughs> to is going to work to my advantage. <laughs> yeah. But we have been absolutely teetotally blessed mm. by the ministry of Pastor Zach Wells over these last few days. And we are honored to have you on the show. Um, I think if we listen close, we're going to have some some folks that agree with us. Mm-hmm. Can you hear them clapping? Uh, not yet. I can't, I can't even hear them clapping. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, they're getting louder. Oh. There they come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They love Zach Wells. Yeah, you guys welcome. For they love you. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've never done that before. Oh, really? Yeah. Just wow. today. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that was just just for you. It was a test, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We really are glad to have you with us. I'm glad to be on. It's. Uh, be on. I'm excited. This is this is going to be fun. My uh, kids and my wife are very surprised. Are, are really? Yeah, they're very surprised. <laughs> they listen to Kingdom Speaker. Oh yeah, they love it. My wife listens every day. Um, okay. And um, she's surprised I made it on here, and she's nervous. She's <laughs> nervous. Hey, Sister I'm Wells, mess up her favorite podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she's nervous about what we're going to say no, or what I'm you're going to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were talking actually before the show about this, and he, he's he's mentioning that his kids are like, you know, how did you get on yeah. the podcast? <laughs> They're a little it's, surprised, right? It's kind of like, um, hey, Jaron, love you, bud, but. Uh, you know, he's not really that impressed. My son's really not that impressed with Kingdom Speak. It's like, yeah, it's something my dad. Does. What's the big deal? <laughs> you know, now Biblos, he's rock. He'll, he'll rock oh, yeah. Biblos. Biblos merch. Now I'm gonna give another shout out here. We're gonna we're gonna go there. Mm. He even for a while was a convo. That's right. Podcast wow. supporter, right. but they dropped the podcast and just went to I think a clothing line because they're not dropping podcasts yeah. anymore. <laughs> so shout out, shout Kurt. out to Kurt Can <laughs> <laughs> It's on. <laughs> trying to help the shots fired. Trying to help the convo fam see if they can get them producing again. So I'm yeah, sure they're not busy doing anything. You never see them you anywhere. Never see them anywhere. No. <sighs> Never at anything. Not preparing for anything. Never producing anything. (laughs) So, um, regardless of what your children and them think, we are glad glad. that that you're here. And we are going to dive into a bit of subject material on um, the the topic of masculinity. Mm. And a, uh, I really think that this is a, a proper, a proper, a proper biblical understanding of what defines masculinity is important. I believe it never before. Yeah, because it's under attack. Under attack. Yeah. Even um, the very, just the very image of it, what it looks like. Obviously, yes. we believe in holiness, which has never before been under attack like it is now. Right. Just, holiness is mostly appearance but it's it's very one of the things i think we miss in holiness is uh, we sometimes assume that modesty is holiness uh hmm. Mod- modesty is modesty right and it's biblical right but holiness is right aligning with the image of god what it looks like yes for a male yes. and a female yes you know we're the only part of creation if you go back to genesis we're the only part of creation that's not comfortable living in its image, in the image God created us. Oh. You never see anything else trying to alter its alter image. Its image. <laughs> yes. And so much so that God mm. had to command us. Yes, yes, yes. And we have to preach it weekly of what we should look like. Nothing else does that. So Wow. It's pretty important. You know, you've already mentioned um, something that, that – I think when, when when discussing the topic of holiness, mm-hmm. I've, I've used the analogy before of it, it's it's like three legs on a stool. Yeah. Scripture, a, a hermeneutic for interpreting scripture is line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, every word being confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So I really think that that modesty is is one leg. On the stool, yeah. Holiness is a leg on the stool, and again, there's there's, there's a whole lot more of that. But the each of the adding components further stabilize yep. 
th- those necessary biblical principles. I believe it. And I, I, I think that even one of the legs can be costly. Ray can be, yep. it's, it's, if, if you just That's take a popular subject lately, it seems to be, would you like to talk about it? <laughs> um, no, I am not never been. In, I won't never, tell never you, dude, ain't nobody got a belt like I got. Yeah. Well, I'm wearing, are we a, talking about an airport or JC uh, Penny tie? <laughs> Is that an airport we're talking about? <laughs> oh my God! I feel like <laughs> something I've similar. S- something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just feel like running. <laughs> my God! You apostolic? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. wow! Yeah! Wow! Oh, wow. Oh, my oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Come on! We oh went God. there right out of the <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've never been there before. The, you're pulling this out. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sister Wells. All people. Do we have her on speed dial? Um, uh, I'm sure we could get yeah, her. Yeah, we can patch her in. Yeah, we can yes. patch her in. Yes. Yeah. She would probably have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, even societally, this this um, you see an, an awakening coming. There, there's many voices that tap into this. Jordan yep. Peterson. For one, yeah. Is, is one that that strikes at the core of pushing back mm-hmm. against the toxicity of masculinity. Yep. I think he's, uh, you and I were talking yesterday, um, he's at least started the engine. Yeah. But you can't, uh, you can't get where he needs to go with that. Right. Without the, that esoteric part of that where it's, the whole man's got to be fixed, not just. Yes. Because a fallen man even if he's masculine, is still not the answer. Mm, right. So you have to have that spiritual Well, we're back to that again. Yeah. Masculinity in exclusion is not the That's answer. Right. It's, it's, it's the image of God. Of the, yeah. the legs yeah. on the stool. Exactly. And uh, obviously part of that is, um, I believe it's Tom Brokaw wrote a book called The Greatest Generation. Yes. Okay, we're, we're a long ways from The Greatest Generation where there were men – who went to war and died for a cause, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like I preached here yesterday. Uh, Paul said in Timothy. That's actually last week. Well, whenever it was. Yeah. <laughs> My bad, guys. I'm sorry. First time you'll have to edit something. <laughs> well, when here at Power we preached. Yeah. In the last days, <laughs> perilous times shall come. Yes. For men shall be. Men were the cause of the perilous times. Uh, um, there's, there's a statement. Um, I don't know the source of this statement, but we use it a lot around, uh, where I pastor the church. I pastor shout out to Christ temple in Gene, Louisiana. Yes. But, um, tough times create tough men, tough men create easy times. Yes. Easy times create weak men. And weak men create tough, tough times. Time. It's a never ending cycle. Mm. Right. And oh, so that's good. We're we're that's in good. a we're in a generation and this is obviously this is not all inclusive because there's great guys and there's people that have it right, but as a whole, society has is on shifting sand yes. with what a man should be. Right. My father told me this. Um and I'm just going with it. You guys leave me where we want to go, but it's <clears> good. I, when I was a young teenager, I asked my dad. I don't know if I actually asked him the question or if this is just what he he wanted me to know. But, uh, in fact, I believe he kind of led me into this. What What is the definition of a man? You know, when I was a young boy or a teenager, it bothered me for someone to call me a boy. Okay. You know? Yeah. When you're, you're like, like insulted. Seven, oh, yeah. When you're 17, 18, mm-hmm. you want to be thought of as a man sure and so if a man called you a boy that was the worst insult you could get Mm -hmm. and my dad would say you know you're a man when it no longer bothers you somebody calls you a boy oh Oh, that's good but then in in that conversation he said (laughs) you can tell a man is a man there's a book by harold bell Wright, when a man's a man it's a great read for everybody it's required reading in my church but you know you're a man, or you know when a man is a man when he is handling all of the things he's responsible for. Okay? There's nothing within the scope of his responsibility that is lacking, whether that be his job, his children, his wife, his church, 
mm. his relationship with God, everything that is is required of him, he's handling it. And it doesn't matter if you're working in an office or you're working on a construction site or you're a deer hunter or you're not. None of that defines a man. A man is handling his business that God's given him. And Well, which is what he was assigned with. Absolutely. In the garden. In the garden. Brother uh, Tipton was at my church a few weeks ago. And um, you think about this. This set me down a path of study. <laughs> that there was no sin. There, oh, yeah. Didn't even have a wife yet. Yeah. There was nothing dying. The earth was biblically yielding its fruit. So there was no work. And God tied dominion to Adam, and he said, dress and keep. So in God's economy, if a man is going to be a man, there's, he's going to be keeping something, which is guarding, and there's going to be a purpose that he has, dressing. He's dressing the garden. To mm -hmm. me, Adam speaks to that. And, and dressing, to your previous point, when you look at that word dressing, that, that's not him running around hanging shirts on flowers. Oh, no, no. No, he was that is, is That is keeping that particular object, that plant, that tree, in alignment with its image. That's right. That's right. You're dressing it. And you're keeping it. And you're keeping it. Garden it. You're not allowing it to become something reflective of something that it's not. Yep. And hmm. so. Yep. And in that same instance, God looks at Adam. And this is a this is something that that I think you have to begin with if you're going to understand what God expects a man to be. He says it's not good. Well, for a man to be alone. Well, now that can go a whole lot a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't that he needed someone to clean his clothes or put his socks away. God did not want him living for his own selfish motives, hmm. even in his perfection. This is before the fall. Has it? We we could just go off, yeah, on here, but in the weeds on that. But it's Bible. I really feel like one of the one of the often overlooked elements of God creating from Adam Eve. Mm -hmm. He needed to help me. He yep. needed to help me. Yep. What was what was she helping him do? Up uh, th there. Exactly. So I really think that the ov the overarching <clears throat> intent of God was that it's impossible for you to accomplish your purpose as a man without help. Exactly. exactly. You need help to get it past the finish line. Which is mm -hmm. what we talked about. You and I just in a conversation. This there's a it's a it's not whole without a with the image of God is not whole without a male and female. It's right. every part of creation. Right. Male and female created he them. Same thing with man and woman. Right. That's right. And and this is this will probably get me a a lot of hate mail. Get ready with the bomb button. Hello. I'm old enough to say this now, or I will be by the in time this long. By the time it's <laughs> uh, I had a young preacher come to me. I'm not going to name his name. My wife gave me direct instructions no to names. not name names. No name and names. So I'm not. You're not. Nope. You guys. I'm not even telling you where he lives. You're, this is a good young man. What? But we don't even know how to pray. No, you, have well, to, you, you, you have don't to. even have to pray about this. I got it handled. But <laughs> maybe the audience knows stuff. <laughs> yeah. So this is. I mean, this is not the only hey, person if, I've listen, given this advice listen, to. If if. If, you know if you're you. listening to this and you're the guy, send oh, us a message and let right. us know who you are. Oh, boy. No. All right, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have this not the only We guy. almost got the You name. almost got it, but <laughs> my wife is a strong voice in my, in my life, you know, oh, which remind me about that in a moment. I'll share something Brother Bass taught me. All right. Um, so this young young evangelist, he's a good guy doing great work. Uh, he, he wanted to talk to me about the next step in ministry how do i get there what do i need to do mm -hmm. and i said well 
I said, do you want me to really tell you or do you want me to just kind of just move you a little further? He said, I want to know. And I said, well, until you get married, you're you're not even who you're going to be in the ministry. Wow. You're as far as you can go. Wow. Now, that's not popular. And Paul talked about not marrying and all that stuff. But my wife is not just a helper in my ministry. I, my ministry is what my ministry is or our ministry because we're we're one. You're one. Absolutely. Like, and 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 this is strong, okay? And and maybe you can either deny or affirm. But I don't even really take a preacher serious until he gets married. He hasn't accomplished he hasn't passed the ultimate test. Whether or not you can keep yourself until you get married, right. okay? Then once you get married, I told him this young man, I said, when you get married, you're you're going to start walking on a different level than you even imagine, and it's true. It happened. The guy's doing great, and he's married now and doing the work of God. Mm. I feel like there's someone over my shoulder that's not married, <laughs> but wow. you know, we'll just aim. It. We'll aim another direction. You know, um, <clears throat> whew. I just feel like God has already spoken to us. I'm going to turn the ministry music on. We need on this. There we go. Here's the ministry yeah. music. Here we is. are entering. Okay. Can you hear that? I hear go it. Go ahead and prophesy. Whenever God speaks, that happens. I hear it. Wow. And God spoke. Yeah. God is speaking right now. <laughs> we have in the studio. <laughs> I so I so love this. Oh, this is a blessing. We, yeah, we yeah. have two single men. Mm. <clears throat> two. I love that. Two. And uh, I think one of them is trying to flag me down right now that he's not as single as he looks. Yeah, they're still young though, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's yeah. another one. There's 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 a, Carson. Yeah, Carson Patrick is here. He's still a teenager. And, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He's still and, in school. And, yeah, and that's, he's good. From there, we can't see the forest for the trees. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, you're I welcome, just, buddy. I just want to know, brother David Forrest, has God given you a word already? Already, we can yeah. go home, as they say. Wow, <laughs> you already <laughs> changed his flight. <laughs> mm. He said he already changed his flight. <laughs> yeah. Can I give you? Can I give you a, a Sister Wells wisdom? On that, yeah, on that subject, on on David, on Forrest. marriage, not oh, David Forrest, oh, okay. on marriage. Okay, um, <laughs> I I get it. When you're a young preacher, you don't want to make a mistake. You're a young minister, sure. you don't want to make a mistake. But here's the problem, um, and I've taught this to a lot of young people. My wife's the source of this. She's originator of this. So this is a Sister Wells moment. She was on the All podcast. Right. Um, she should be on the podcast. Yeah, she's unbelievable. But. You know what all God has spoken to you about your future. Sure. So you judge yourself by your future, mm -hmm. but you judge everybody else by where they're at. And you don't know their future. Oh, let's give a bomb to Come Sister on. Wells. Sister Wells. That is our Bible bomb. Wow. What do you think? That is so mm -hmm. true. So you got some young man in the altar. He, all he knows is what God's going to do in his life. That's good. When he looks across at this girl who's maybe the same age as him, and he sees her present position, right? Her present place in God. He does not see her. And he doesn't see, but he doesn't realize that nobody sees his either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you, you. Fair point. My wife's tips to them or advice to them is find somebody and talk about your future, and if it matches, all the stuff will all work right, out, so man. Seems how we're. That's the podcast. Seems how we're going there. <laughs> That's masculine. It's part of all. It's all. No, this it is goes good. together. This man. is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sincere question. You can you can dodge, deflect. Okay. I don't do much dodging. Okay. Which is what's got my wife nervous. I'm I'm curious what your opinion is. Do you believe <clears throat> when it, when we're talking about spouses? So let, okay. let me let me put this disclaimer out. Okay. I believe that there is the will of God, okay? And you want to be married in the will of God. Yeah. Two can't walk together unless they be agreed. I need to yoke yeah. together, okay? Yeah. So within that framework, do you espouse the view that there's only one? Absolutely not. 
Okay. I don't either. But yeah. that's, that's... Uh, on the will of God, <clears throat> let me say it this way. There was a place one time. Because that is a big deal for a lot of people. I mean, uh, yeah, I believe. I want to make sure they're the right yeah. one. I, I, you want to make sure yeah. they're the will of God. Yeah, the will of God. So let's. I think if you get the proper understanding of the will of God, which I'm not the end all on this, um, there's a place when I was evangelizing that I felt extremely. Where did you say? I didn't say the place. Oh, I thought. <laughs> sorry, I just thought I missed it. Yeah, okay. you were trying to get it out of me. <laughs> so many unnamed slick, people and dude. places. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> I felt like it was the will of God for me to go there and to and, pastor yeah, or okay to pastor yeah. and felt it strongly, but I didn't end up going there. So does that mean the rest of my life is plan Out B? Of the will of God, right. Or at least plan mm-hmm. B. I, I don't believe the will of God is a person or a location. I believe it's a direction. Well the, said. The call of God. That's good. The call of God says, come after me. Mm-hmm. And so my advice to young people is, Chase God with everything you can. Yes. And if somebody keeps up, marry him. Right. Like, right. All the rest of that will figure itself out. Well, and then, and then as, as a, not just as a matter of technicality, because on the other, on the other side of that marriage, you're sitting in the pastor's office. Yeah. Having discussions with folks that are, that are having marriage problems. And if you're not careful, Mm. This is where that crops up. Well, I just don't think they were that the one. They were the one. There, there's not a the one. Oh, so then we justify why the relationship isn't working. Well, absolutely, yeah. and why and I can, don't need to work can, it no more. Then we can just cut it off and yeah. start again. I believe. I believe there's a Bible precedent for that. I believe there's a principle that I've taught. And this is this is going to put me on shaky water, okay, or shaky ground. Mm-hmm. I don't believe God will tell you who's the one. The last time he gave someone a wife was Adam and Eve. And look what happened. And Adam happened. said, the wife you gave me. Now God says, you pick, pick your own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a biblical, I mean, I believe it's somewhere in, it's in the Old Testament. I'll have to look, but uh, it's about the Benjamites. They didn't have wives and, or it's the daughters of the Benjamites. It's when they come out, just get you one. And and that was blessed by God. They they well, come by. They jumped out of the bushes and grabbed them a wife. And it's yeah. I mean, yeah. The best place to do that is at the altar. You know, make sure they're not married. But say, hey, that, you look like that's somebody also that can important. do the will of God with our in studio audience is listening there, again. Hey. Brother, yeah. if I was a single sitting in the studio right now, yeah, I you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I met my wife in the altar of youth camp, literally, and she was praying, seeking God, and. Well, I think I think I think it's more important, especially once you're married, to have this understanding. Yep. Maybe it's the fact the insecurities yeah. of, of upbringing, relationships that have failed, relationships yeah. that people have been taken advantage of. There, they hesitate to step into that degree of commitment. Yeah. Um, but really, it's more about being the one, being the one, I than agree. finding the one. I agree totally. And and part of this goes back to masculinity. You got right. all right. Uh, marriage is not a covenant; it's right. a vow. Yes. Okay. Right. You make a vow. Right. And you make a vow right. to God and to your spouse. Right. And part of being a man. Is handling your business. Right. You made a vow. It doesn't matter how you feel. Sure. It doesn't matter. I mm-hmm. fell in love. I fell out of love. That's yeah. impossible. That's right. a decision. <clears throat> Who told right. you that? Right. The devil told you that. You know, when people come in or have come in your office and say, I don't love my spouse anymore. Well, that, who told you that? Yeah, exactly. And 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 frankly, God when, doesn't care. Well, when you're supposed to love your enemies, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of you mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, There's a Bible, Bible bomb. Woo! Yeah. Yikes! See, if I had those buttons, I would have mashed that one. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Good job, Derek. <laughs> Doric. <laughs> I'm just not gonna call you that, man. That's <laughs> oh, that's that. mean, man. Elder. Uh, elder, I can handle it, Elder. <laughs> so, 
So while we're in this pause right here, um, mm. if, if anybody's interested in pictures of who's in the mm-hmm. studio, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I, have, yeah. I have a few. You can just chime in, and yeah, and we'll. Uh, we'll I mean, I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. married. Yeah. I'm married. Okay. I'm taking yes, sir. off right. the market. So, yeah. Okay. Off the market. I mean, I hate that all the good guys are gone, but we'll yeah. give you what we I got mean, you left. Take what's left. Yeah. <laughs> you can turn them into what you want them. <laughs> <laughs> all the masculine uh, guys right. are gone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody that drives a truck that's a queen. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Well, well, I'll stay off of that. <laughs> I will love you, Brother David. That's yeah. good. Mm. Praise the Lord. I feel blessed. Okay. So you made a statement, and, and I, in, in preaching at Power Conference. Yeah. You notice I didn't say yesterday. Yeah, I saw. I noticed that. Okay. Yesterday's today. Yeah. Yesterday. Okay. And yeah. <laughs> so... The statement was, and again, it's, it's it's in this greater discussion of masculinity. Yep. And a Bible-based. You said, in reference to Agag, when Samuel was confronting Saul mm-hmm. about what, what is the hearing? The lowing of the cattle. The lowing of the yeah. cattle. Yep. And then the Bible says that Agag delicately mm. approached Samuel. Mm. And and. It's always intrigued me that he says, you know, isn't the time of yep. of, of death, death yeah. past? In other words, aren't you over this now? Yeah. <laughs> he probably said it like that, too. Yeah, about like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's why I'm telling you my gravel in my voice was, 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 on purpose was a strategic today. move. Yeah. We didn't record this the first day on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you made a statement. It might not be sin. Yeah. But it was soft. It was soft. Um, unpack that a bit more. Mm. That's that's a in this discussion Ooh. of masculinity. Yeah. Well, because uh, again, the attack is always it's always on manhood. It's always on manhood. Yeah, it's always Hollywood's been, after it. Had started in the forties and fifties. Yeah. Hollywood yeah. attack the attack. The figure of manhood. Right. Make dad look like an idiot. Yeah, make him look stupid. You know, make Archie him look Bunker. Ignorant. And look him look like a bumbling, right. grouchy fool. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. The Bible says in the New Testament, um, I don't even know how far we want to go with this, but um, <laughs> it says the word. However far your wife is comfortable. Well, she's already, she's already checked out. <laughs> she was in here. Um, effeminate. It says it's unrighteousness. Okay? Yes. You know, it says that yes. these are the works of unrighteousness. So at, at least, if, if you don't want to say it's, this is almost semantics, but if you don't want to say sin, it's at least unrighteous. And so let's look at it. The world has, I mean, where we're at today, right now, in the world, the world is blending everything. Right. Blending. Hates distinction. That's right. It hates distinction. And God right. is all about distinction. Going, Everything. Going back to holiness, it's about distinction. Come out from a moment. It's now. like, you know, the, the question of wearing pants or, or dresses, right. male and female, right. it's not about modesty. Right. There are places in my life that this is going to be a little too much maybe, but I can be unclothed and not be ashamed. Right. But there's nowhere on planet Earth where I can put on what pertains to a woman because God is watching. Yes. Because it's everywhere. It's about distinction. And it's an abomination. It's an abomination. Right. And it's all, it's an abomination unto God, not unto the Jews. It was unto God. And yes. it's, so that never changes. Right. And so all of holiness is about distinction at gender and, and set apart from the profane, the unclean from the profane or the clean from the profane. So, there are some things that start softening that edge. Okay, fashion's one of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to be careful with fashion. Right. There's a part about. I mean, it's not. There's anything wrong. We're back on that again. There's not anything wrong with nice things, but but why do you need them? Exactly. Okay. Um, it's kind of like the thing we're talking about here 
that we weren't ever mentioning a yes. minute ago, yeah. you know, I don't have to worry about that. Right. But if they ever figure out how much hunting clothes cost, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you know, right. But it, that doesn't matter. Right. You see what I'm saying? So there's a softness to, um, and, and Jesus said it when he's talking about John the Baptist. He said, Who, what did you what'd come, you out, come to out to see? Right. This this has got a hard edge to it. Yeah, the, soft raiment. You, you didn't see that. This guy's not coming out here, and, and I'm not talking about fashion in its sense, but I'm talking about the world tries to soften. I mean, that's the objective. Yeah, used to. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with smoking cigarettes, but everybody wanted to be the Marlboro Man. He was a tough cowboy guy. Yeah, you know, and so I mean, you guys probably don't even know what the Marlboro Man is. Yeah, what we what grew is up. That? Yeah, you're. Yeah, you know who the Marlboro Man is. <laughs> He was an old cowboy, and it's so think about this. You think about this. In true, in true, this is kind of a historical lesson. So every little kid kept, plays cowboys. When you want, to, when you're a little kid, you want to be a cowboy. You got a six shooter, you got a hat, you got boots. Do you realize how limited the actual time period of cowboys was? It was about twenty years from eighteen, right. about eighteen seventy to eighteen ninety. 20 years or 30 years has impacted generation 150 years of, yeah. of history. Yeah. Okay. And because it took a, a hard generation to make the trek to, to settle the West. Like if you were weak, you just didn't make the journey. Yeah. You just didn't survive. And so it's, that that is it has a legacy to it. That strength has a legacy to it, and so I think what Paul's talking about. And so this was even a problem in the New Testament. He had to address it in the New Testament. This is not a present day issue. This is an old issue. That's mm -hmm. Paul addressed it, mm -hmm. and he said, and even Jesus addressed it when he's talking about John the Baptist. It's not soft raiment. This is not effeminate, which is unrighteousness. This manhood has strength. Right. Not it's not always a bully. In fact, Proverbs thirty one, which is a strange place to go when you talk about masculinity. Sure. But Proverbs thirty one, the first nine verses are not about the virtuous woman. It's about what like she the taught yes. the king. Yes. And one of the things there is he is she's talking to him about the things that his strength is for. So it's it's a given that this virtuous woman is going to have a strong son. Like there's no, very good. there's not even a, there's not an alternative. Right. She says, don't give your strength to the things that destroy kings. Don't give your strength to wine. And don't use your strength to pervert the judgment of the afflicted. In other words, don't use your strength to oppress anyone. You use your strength to deliver. You use your oh, strength. Oh, that's so good. You use your strength to lift. Uh, that's good. And that's what the virtuous woman teaches. <laughs> you lift. And and so if the devil can take that away from society, then he's wow. won. He's won. Boom. He's won. Wow. Wow. Does that make sense? That makes total sense because that, 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 lines up with meekness meekness is not mm. to be confused with that's weakness that's exactly right weakness, meekness right. is strength yep. Yep. Under, control. under control and mm -hmm. confidence so you can't have a meek man without having a strong man that's right you can't and and humility is not low self-esteem ah sure mm -hmm. humility is confidence it's not insecurity yeah right. my dad my dad taught me and this sometimes gets me in trouble. But it's not bragging if you can do it more than once. That's right. <laughs> you know? I mean, so, That's so, good. so let me ask you this. Okay, say say there's something you're good at. And you know it. You guys are good at doing a podcast. If someone asks you about that and you say, well, we just try to do the best you can. That's almost lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, not, right. it's not arrogance to say what you're about. Right. I, yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. right. we, can, we can handle that. Yeah. And I think that is part of that strength mm -hmm. that that the the virtuous woman 
is teaching her. She's, she did not have to, it was expected that her son would have strength. Yes. She had to teach him the proper use of that strength, which is if you give your strength to, to women in yes. that sort, yes. and yes. if you give your strength to wine, the things that destroy kings, yes, then you're not going to have the strength to lift the afflicted and to help those who are helpless. What, is, what does Paul say about true religion? Or is it James? True, true religion. Yeah, James. James. Yeah. Is to visit the widows, the fatherless, in their affliction. That strength, that's, that's pure religion. It, but it takes strength. Right. The, the, the afflicted doesn't, don't need more affliction. Mm. Right. They need something with strength. Right. That's right. And that's a man. It's always got a you man. You don't want a Moses coming to, yeah. to, to, to deliver you that doesn't have... Yeah. I mean, Moses was a bad hombre. And he was meek. But he was meek. He was meek. And, I mean, you think about the boldness it takes to confront God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Moses told the Lord he needed to repent. Now, you think about what kind of strength that is. He said, Lord, Bro. you need to repent of the evil you thought to do to your people. That's strength. But he was he was the uh, meekest man. The first word, the, 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 yeah, yeah. There was other words that start with S that came to mind when you said that he confronted God too, and strength wasn't one of them. Yeah, like borderline stupid. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah that's what Bro <laughs> Brother Lambeth said. He, he yeah. argued. But I mean, God. That is so true, though. He, he, hmm. he became a deliverer See, to those people. So much of this has everything to do, even with spiritual leadership pastoring yep. mm -hmm. ministry you don't want to be pastored by a weak pastor oh no it's true no absolutely you want to be pastored by someone who has an understanding of who they are yep embraces their identity see that the, these discussions are so much larger than just a gender at this yep, point it is it's 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 ministerial assignment it's recognizing the the, the the who god has called you to be yep brother brother booker I'm probably stealing some of his thunder. If he's going to be a regular on the podcast, he'll cover this better than I am. He's the one who introduced this thought process about. So there's three things that are necessary. These are from Brother Booker. There's three things that are necessary for a church. It's the word of God, the spirit of God, and the spirit of the pastor, the man. Wow. Okay. So those are the three factors that cause a church to be successful, whatever that is. Okay, we, we have an, a, a meter of what is success. Right. Which one of those is most important? Mm. The one that For, has the most potential to waver. There you go. So mm -hmm. every church well has the Spirit of God. Every church mm -hmm. has the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But how are those things handled within that church is based on the spirit of that man. Okay. To, to, to reinforce the point, if, if the other two elements are there, but the man's spirit is wrong. Yeah. What does it do to the church? There it destroys it. It destroys mm -hmm. or so, it. Or it doesn't have the strength mm -hmm. to lift it. Right. I mean, how many times have right. you as a pastor or a pre let's just say preacher, not a pastor, but as a preacher, sure. you go into a situation and in effect, what you're doing is you are, you are inserting which is the masculinity yes. side of it's it's yes. it's assertion. Yes, you're 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 walking into a, a situation that is cowed down, oppressed, depressed. Mm -hmm. You haven't you have a choice. You can either just kind of go through the motions, or you can physically and spiritually, with the power of the word and the spirit, lift that congregation. Right, and that takes strength. That takes strength. And it takes, but it takes a capability. It may, let's maybe use the word capability instead of strength. I'm not talking about being able to lift weights. and I'm talking about inner strength, mm -hmm. mental strength, that you're just not going to quit. You're just not going to, like you can't, the only way to get rid of a man is to kill him. You're going to have to deal with him. Right. And the devil doesn't want to deal with men. Okay, so have, what, what you're talking about here is, is, Jordan Peterson and Dennis Prager and some of them get into this in a discussion on Exodus. Yeah. And I think it's, I listened to some of that. Yeah. Jonathan Paggio made the statement that a tyrant, Pharaoh, yep. was, was empowering Hebrew midwives 
mm-hmm. to kill their sons. Okay. Okay. The statement that he made it is was was this that tyranny always empowers the feminine to kill the masculine. <laughs> That's true. It happened. Hmm. It happened in Herod's day, Jesus' day. Absolutely. Yep. Because when you take that to its logical conclusion, yep, it's the death of a generation. The only way to control that people yep. is by removing a man out yep. of the picture. That's right. And and this will probably get some some hate mail, but we'll forward you, it. You, yeah, you can't. You can't lead through hysteria. And and the feminine side is closer to being hysterical. And I'm not talking about laughing. I'm talking about that you're you're it's fear. The devil works in fear. And my wife's scared of tornadoes. They they don't bother me. If we get hit by a tornado, I mean it was God's I mean God's in charge. So the the devil I watched a deal the other day it was a it was a clip off of a podcast. I don't know whose it was. But this guy It wasn't us. No, it wasn't you guys. Okay. This this guy interviewed a child molester that had gotten out of prison. He'd served like twenty five years. And he asked this guy, What did you look for? And the first thing he looked for was a house that didn't have a father figure. Oh didn't matter what else was going on, didn't matter who they were. If there was a father, if there was a strong father figure who was connected, he just left My them God. alone. That's what that's what he said. Wow. Now wow. you think about that. Wow. Not doesn't matter what kind of figure. Yeah. Smite the shepherd. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be clear. That's right. The vulnerability of right. the absentee father. Keep and guard. Okay. Dress and guard. So they they went on to say this, and and, and I know I'm parroting them a bit, but this was this was I think it's Prager that brings this out that God is he presents himself in the masculine yeah most of the time right yep. our father our father which art in heaven because by nature boys take authority rules direction from male figures Oh yeah, and and submit to them more so than from female. Absolutely, okay. That's a statistical reality. That's scientific fact. <clears throat> right. Yeah. They they just do it. <coughs> My apologies. So when when they take that, he said that is why. This is a statement that he made. We have way too many absentee fathers. On earth, mm. the last thing is we need one in heaven. Whew. That's that's awesome. And so the the Ten Commandments coming from God, our Mother, mm. would be is not the same. That's right. As from our Father. Yeah. And the Book of Proverbs <clears throat> is the same thing. You, you know, it is a reality. You and I both pastor people that that there's the father, there's not a father in the home. Yes, and so you can lean on that excuse. Yes, but Proverbs is there's 31 chapters of Proverbs because there's 31 days in most months. Exactly, and the Bible says, "Hear the instruction of a father." If you don't have a father, read Proverbs. Oh, that's so that's so it's good. In there. That is so good. It's, this wow. is the instruction of a father. <clears throat> yes. Literally, that's what it is. This is what Do a father would tell that. You. If you read Proverbs, it's a it's a it's a biblical guarantee. It's one of the, mm. the only it's a guarantee. You will have wisdom, <clears throat> strength. I believe it's brother and justice, Andrew. equity, all yeah. that comes yeah. from reading and, yeah. and so that's what a father gives you, but you get that from reading Proverbs too. Yeah. I believe it's brother Enzi that said if you only had one book and it was Proverbs that you could still. You'd be pretty close. Yeah. You'd be mm. pretty close. Yeah. Because it's, it's wisdom. Now, this interesting. Wisdom is a woman in Proverbs. Yes. So there's the instruction of a father, but wisdom is a woman. 
Think about that. That's interesting, though. But it's it's a reality. So wisdom helps instruction. Yep. They go together. And Help that's meet. the beginning. Is it wisdom and instruction? That's the beginning. Fear the Lord is mm-hmm. the beginning wow. of wisdom. Okay. Wow. So, and it, and it's, the Bible's, I think it was, a, was it Peterson that said the image of God is male and female? He, he brings out all that. Yes. Um, yes. Brother Bass, Wade Bass, is a legend. I mean, is. is there anybody as good? I mean, the dude is just, yeah. he's like a walking sermon. How come he won't come on Kingdom Speak? I don't know. I thought he had been on one time. No, no. He's never been on? No. Oh, so no, he, no. oh that was the other one. Yeah. What other oh, one? Crickets. We have a recording of Brother Bass. Oh, you yeah, have a recording. Hear that? Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think he was on Biblos one time. Oh, yeah. Lord. Oh, no. uh, what? But I, but I think it was like a call in. I don't know if he's actually there. Yeah. But, and we'll see what we can do about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wade Bass told me a story or a Bible. He gave me a little sermon. He gave it to me, so I'm going to use it. <clears throat> David, when he's dealing with N- Nabal, Abigail's husband. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is powerful. So the young servant describes Nabal as a man that no man could speak to. Right. And then the, the, the contrast, which is one of the ways you study right. the Word of God, is you contrast everything in it. When Abigail hears that David's coming to kill Nabal, she comes to him and she talks she to him. She entreats David. She talks to him. Yes. So the, 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 the contrast there is not only was David a man who could be talked to by men, he could be talked to by a woman. And he would yes. listen, and he would yes. receive instruction. Yes, and I think biblically, that's mm-hmm. in that day, that was pretty earth shattering. Yes, it was. That David would he was willing to listen. And you notice the 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 I've, I've always been fascinated by Abigail's choice of words. She knew who she was talking to. Oh yeah, <clears throat> David, you don't want to use a sword. Mm-mm. If you use a sword. They're going to say, you done this and you done it by. Mm. If you give God a chance, this is his, her words. Yeah. <laughs> he will sling. Sling it out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. She she knew what chords to pluck yep. on David's heartstring mm-hmm. to take him back to that moment yep. where God had done it before. That's pretty neat, too, What that sling. I was actually thinking about that when you said that. She uses a term, the bundle of life. Yeah. Okay, so it's this, yeah. boy, you talk about your life becoming what God wants it to be. Yes. It's a bundle. It's all twisted up. It's all. Yes. And if you if you keep the right spirit, the things that don't need to be in, it'll get slung out. Hmm. If you don't do anything stupid, and it says, it shall come to pass when the Lord has done all the good that he has spoken unto thee. He's going to do it if you just do right. God, that's I mean, what we're part, talking about here is that masculinity. is It's about being upright. Exactly. Yes. Being it's righteous. Right. It's upright. And the Bible says he will withhold no good thing from them that walk upright. Right. No good thing. This is not advocating running around the house, beating yourself on the chest. No. Screaming that no. you're the man of the house. No. Bless God. That rarely works. <laughs> 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 rarely works. You know, yeah. uh, that's like... Uh, Pastor Coon, Crawford Coon, you know, yeah. his church over in Gina. Yep. I remember him saying here years ago that he had to hang up the pastor plaque guard on the bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> At the front door. Yeah, yeah that, right. that just yeah. didn't yeah. that didn't cut it. I, I tell my wife sometimes we'll be fussing about something. I'll say, bless God, I'm the pastor. <laughs> it doesn't go very well. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't go very well. Yeah. No, but there, it, it, David, I mean, is there any, could you make a case for anybody in the Bible stronger than David? I I, I don't think you could. You, you, if you drew David in a fight, you died. Yeah. Didn't matter how big you were, how many of you were there. You got it. If you got in a deal with David, you died. But David could be talked to by a woman. Well, and this comes back to masculinity is not a physical stature. Nope. It's a responsibility. You know, I, 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 I'm kind of making a... Uh, 
straw man argument on the silence of scripture. Yeah. But I don't believe that Samson was eight foot tall and had six fingers on each hand. No. And and ran around like a giant. Yeah. Why would they have asked him where his strength was? <clears throat> they would have known. Yeah. Would have mm-hmm. been apparent. So there's a degree for every apostolic man that the strength you need and the masculinity you need comes from a spiritual component. Absolutely. Not a physical component. Absolutely. And when the anointing would settle on him, mm. man, he could tie 300 yep. foxes together by their tail That's right. and set the world afire. Which is what helps us do what everything we need to do. Absolutely. You know, there's... There's a lot of masculine figures that have strength, mm-hmm. but they're not spiritual. And it's the it, Jesus is our example. Yes, I mean, he was he was bad enough in the flesh to to clean the temple out. Okay, he didn't do that with the word of God. He took a whip and did yeah. it. You know, <laughs> he took charge. Yeah, I mean, he took him. He took authority. Yes. And, you know, and some of this is... Also, he, he allowed himself to be talked to by women. He did. Exactly right. <laughs> right. He could. Be, I mean, his mother mm-hmm. entered, entered him into the ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he says, do it at the marriage yeah. of Cain. Yeah. So, you know, there's... Brother Wilson preaches a message. I've, I've quoted several guys, but all this stuff comes... Have you ever heard Brother Wilson preach you told about... told your wife you also, were he will not, names. Well, these he are good. He also will good. not come on kingdom speak. Really? Yeah. I could probably do something about that. Oh really? Yeah, I'll talk to him. <sighs> Maybe him and Brother Bass could uh, do it. Man. Do it together, deal. Yeah, you think yeah. they could Maybe scrape we'll up, up enough there. content to get us through? <laughs> oh, we geez. could. E- we'd be even willing to reduce it to like a forty-minute show. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Those guys are. You know, they're awesome. Let's talk about the uh, the fury of Jesus is the message Brother Wilson talked about. The theory. Uh, the, the fury. F u r y. You, you. I think it's Psalm twenty-two. Jesus said, "Now you talk about strength." He says in Psalm, which is the answer key, of, and if you want to know how people felt in the Bible, you read Psalms. Right. And while he's on the cross, that's Psalm 22. He says, you have forsaken me, but my fury uh, upheld, upheld me. me. I'm, I'm up here because of my commitment, the, my yeah. strength. My, yeah. You know, the, his spirit, he, he asked, he said, God, why have you forsaken me? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's mm-hmm. like... Um, yeah. Anger is not a problem. It's a sinning while you're angry. That's, that's right. Problem. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Be angry and sin. You, you don't want to be around someone that can't get wound up. No. About that which needs yeah. to be. Yeah. What moves you? Aggravating. Exactly. Yeah. There, there needs to be a part of a man that, that there are some things that are off limits. Yes. Like they're off limits. You yes. don't. You just don't go there. You, you don't do mess this with and family. this happens. That's right. Right. You know. This is not. What we're talking about about biblical masculinity is you can't wear you can't carry enough pocket knives you can't own enough whatever you, it's, right. it's, it's not something about getting it doesn't matter what kind of truck you drive some of the biggest men I know the toughest strongest men I know are just they but you you grab a hold of them and you're gonna have a deal on your hands yeah yeah and if you mess with their family or their church they're you're gonna have to deal with them that and that I think that is the biggest thing of what I'm trying to talk about is we need some young men, a generation of young men that are a spiritual force that before the devil can mess with the church, before he can mess with any of our children, he's got to deal with them. But if he can make them soft, yes, he doesn't have to deal with them. Yes. There's nothing, you don't, you're not worried about that. You know, it's, it's like, you know, you got to be prepared, man. Be prepared. I, mean, I wasn't a Boy Scout because I was bored. And I went to one Boy Scout meeting, and I was like, I already know all this stuff. But, like, <laughs> you just got to be capable. You got to be capable. And that, you got to put yourself in frightening situations to see what you got in you. You know, like, I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I don't jump off of bridges with bungee cords or jump out of airplanes and parachutes and if you do that that's cool but but I've been in some dangerous situations physically and like 
you, you know what you're capable of. And once you right. find out, it, this is what kids do. Like, right. they think you did the wrestling deal. You, you find out yeah. your boundaries, but you also find out what you're capable of. Yeah. And it's I, two things that I try to do to myself every day. And I believe this works in whatever God's doing in my life. I try to challenge myself at least once a day, whether it's lifting weights, a new a new record or a new another set or walking or anything, playing golf. What your challenge is a challenge to yourself. And then I try to tell myself no well, at least once so a day. Good. Something that I may want, something that I desire, something that I would go rather do, tell myself no. Because mm. it's you're keeping that because what we're talking about, if it's unrestrained, you're useless. Right. Is a, a motor is not any good unless it has restraint. The belts and the right. gears all right. fit together. So it's it doesn't true. matter how strong you are if it's not if you're not capable of harnessing that, putting it where it needs to go. Constru- controlled, restrained strength, which is I've taught this, and I don't. You guys tell me when we're getting ready to be done, but. Titus, Paul told Titus, be sober-minded and in all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works. So wow. he talks about gravity there, <clears throat> grave, not sad, but that's a, that's a weightiness. Like mm-hmm. um, you, you got to be, you got to have the right mindset, sober-minded. You're thinking about things that everybody else isn't thinking about. That's what your da- that's what my dad always tried to get us to do. He never sure. told me to be careful. Sure. He told me to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Think about what this means. And when you that's good. the 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 definition of being a grown up is you're thinking about the consequences of what you're doing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kids yeah. just go. They they don't care. You know, they're kids. They're supposed to be. Yep. But once you cross over into manhood. Or womanhood, adulthood, you should be thinking about the consequences of what you're doing or what you're not doing, and I think that's a big thing to to think sober-mindedly. Yes, the Bible says you know it's just given. You're there, the only way to deal with youthful lust is to flee it. Yes, you're not going to be delivered of youthful lust. You can't go to the altar. You're not going to get enough holiness. No, ghosts. you're not going to go to the altar, and the pastor's going to lay hands on you and pray lust out of your heart. If you're a young man, it's part of your DNA. It's part of your nature. It's part of what will make you great. Right. But if you don't learn to control it, it will destroy you. Because that same drive that makes you go after the things that you desire, the things you want, that fight or flight deal, if you don't harness it, it will destroy you. Because you'll take something that's not yours. You'll you'll go out of bounds, and God will judge you like he did David. And so restraint in a, in a pattern of life is a beautiful thing that, and, and you know, them, you've seen them, they're just set apart. They're just a different, there's something on them when they, we, they make uh, their friends make fun of them. Say you're like a 50 year old. It's, it's just, a, it's, it's just a different level of thinking. It's not, I don't think it's so much as a, a personality deal. Some of it could be. My wife's big in the personality types and all that stuff. But some of it is is it's a it's a heavenly thinking, that an eternal kind of thinking. What does this mean in eternity? If you're called to preach at nineteen, you can't think like everybody else. Right. You have to think eternally. You have to think ahead. And so anyway, all that ties in together with being biblical wow some of that would be called toxic masculinity but it's only toxic because it's non-existent in the in the mainstream world yes you know in the church it's still prevalent because we still live in the image of god and uh but anyway part of that is even in the church we've gotten uncomfortable with with young people getting married early and i say early i'm talking about 19 20 21 we even almost advise against that but adam said that's the first thing you got to do 
Yes. For this cause. Yes. The purpose of God, the dressing and keeping for this cause. Every so, other cause in life is subservient to. That's right. That and so it's delayed adulthood. I, I, yeah. And we're doing that. We, yeah. we're, we're advising that on, on, almost accidentally because the world has taught us that. But I, I, think, it's, I think it has long-term effects. And I, I feel like a prophetic spirit has just come <laughs> back in this room. And, <laughs> well, if I was single right now, wow. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. He feels ganged up on right now. I can tell you that. <laughs> and he doesn't have a mic. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. that's what's. Can you say something over there? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, anyway. This has been so, so good. Man, I like it. I like what wow. you guys are doing. This is this is important. I think these discussions are, are, are critical. Yeah. Because you can't just say be masculine. You have to. Yeah. It's not to, just um, be tough. It's a, right. That's just this oversimplification. Right. You know, just uh, I teach my young men, and some of them get it, some of them don't. Be the difference maker. Yes. In any situation, be the guy that if you're playing softball, when you show up, your team says we got a chance. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're down sixty to one, or if you're praying when you show up. They're like, oh, oh yeah. something's supposed to happen. Yeah. It's just a difference maker. And and that can be male or female. Be the difference maker. Well, now you're tying into things that, and, and, and if, we, if we unpack all this, we will need a series. But I, I think the effort is also concerted to undermine things that are expressions of masculinity. Oh, yeah. And, and the mislabeling of worship is a masculine thing. It is. It is. Men first partakers up yep. holy hands without wrath, without wrath and doubting is a masculine expression. Yep. So the, the the world's attack on what masculinity really is is also an attack against worship. Right. Yep. That's beautiful. It really is. It really is. Wow. Sister Wells, if you're still awake, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think he did all right. Your yeah. husband done incredible. Well, thank you guys for the opportunity. This is I awesome. Like thank you for being with us this week, and we're going to go have some more church. There you go.